Okay, my check, my check. Are we on? Are we on? How's everybody doing tonight? Let's take it to Instagram.
started here in a little bit if everybody's chiming in looks like we got a couple people coming in and out but uh 845 we'll be at it so keep jamming drop your questions in the chat and i will be right back
Saturday night. I see some people in the chat. It's awesome. What are we going to do tonight, everybody? Tonight should be pretty, uh, pretty short. I do have some plans later on, so I thought we could make a landscape like we did uh, two nights ago. And uh, tonight's going to be in Cinema 4D and Octane, so if you're watching the replay of this, you don't have those programs, a lot of the concepts still uh, hold true in other programs like Blender, uh, Unreal Engine. A lot of the stuff we're doing tonight, uh, you can kind of do in those programs as well. So let's kick it off, everybody. Let's do this thing. We are in Cinema 4D, Octane. We got our window set up. Let me make it just a little bigger for everybody. So yeah, I had a blast making uh, the landscape the other night. I thought it was pretty fun. So we're gonna do the same thing again tonight. As always, I like to start with my plane here. Uh, let me make sure everybody can hear me. One second. Cool. So, I always like to start with my plane display. I like to have it constant shading and lines so I can see all my geometry. I'm going to make this plane big. I'm going to change the width to 4,000, change the height to 4,000, my width segments to 100, height segments to 100. And what that does is give us a bigger plane with a lot more uh, geometrical lines. So when we add a, something like a deformer to it, we get a little more information. So let's just do that. Let's add a deformer to our plane. And we're gonna add a displacer. Now in Cinema 4D, what a deformer does is it deforms the geometry. We are gonna always put our deformers as a child of our object. Uh, to make deformers work in Cinema 4D, that's what you gotta do. So with the displacer placed under the uh, plane. Go ahead and select our displacer. I'm going to change the height to 30. I'm also going to go to the shading tab. And under the shading drop down, I'm going to click noise. And right when I do that, you'll see our plane change. It's now all this jaggedy edge. And what's going on here is the deformer. You can see it's all this black and white imagery. The black is controlling the deformation of the geometry. So when I click into the noise, uh, and for those in the chat, I see people jumping in and out. I got the chat up tonight. I know I wasn't at answering questions the other night, but tonight I will do a better job. So if I do see the chat come through, make sure to ask any questions. I'm gonna change my noise to, let's do Naki. Now you can see the patterns change, but it's still really jagged. That's because our global scale is at 100. If I change this to something like 3000, you kind of start seeing the deformation kick in. We're starting to have a little bit of a, a landscape pop in there, which is cool. Now, we did this the other night, and we're going to do it again. Repetition is key. Once we have our deformation displacement right, let me uh, see if I can crank up the noise a little bit more. Cool. Once we got the noise going, I'm actually going to select our plane, and I'm going to actually hit Connect Objects, Connect Objects plus Delete. So now it's a piece of geometry. The splicer's gone. I'm going to change our menu to Sculpting. So when we change it to Sculpting. Uh, we get a whole different menu that pops up, which is nice to see. I'm going to select our grab tool. You see this like a uh, circle pop up? When I click down and drag my mouse, I'm able to take the geometry even further. So I'm going to make some hills, some big hills in the back. Cool. Starting to get 
get some hills in there. And, uh, I'm actually going to, if you click and drag down, you can see the geometry comes down again, just like the night before. I'm going to do a little river. Let's actually drop all this down. This is where our water is going to go, actually. So let's make a little divot in the land. So, once everything is sculpted, we got our landscape, geometry ready to go. We're going to go back to our layout menu. I'm going to go back to my user startup menu. Size this out for y'all a little bit. So, with our plane selected, we're actually going to go to our going to select the polygon mode make sure our selection tool is selected and I'm actually going to make our cursor a little bigger here and I am going to select the divot that we created I'm actually going to highlight it you can move around holding shift while you select lets you select again and what we're doing here is we're going to tell cinema 40 that this selection actually going to be one of our vertex weight maps which is you'll see soon if you don't know what that means but eventually when we put grass and stuff all over this landscape this little river right here this vertex map is going to tell uh oh did you hear that train horn yeah i live by a train track if you can't tell uh so once this is selected uh, we're going to invert our vertex map and how do we do that with select going to hit invert and the select menu again and let me know if you can see the drop downs the other night somebody said they couldn't see the drop down menus on the select menu we're going to hit set vertex weight and we're going to set it to 100 and just like that it kind of inverts now you see this heat map also on our plane object you see this little icon that's popped up which is our selection for everybody that's just joining, people that are coming in and out, we're working in Cinema 4D tonight in Octane. We're going to make a little landscape that we're... The last one we did, we didn't put on OpenSea, but uh, this one maybe we will. We'll see. So, when that's being done, we're going to fire up our render engine. So you can't see a lot right now. It doesn't look like a lot. I know it's pretty boring, but if you stick around, you're going to see how this thing comes to life. Now, one of my favorite plugins for Cinema 4D, I'm going to talk about them tonight. Uh, and I am a big advocate of Grayscale Gorilla. This section down here is kind of my Grayscale Gorilla hub that I've set up. A bunch of different materials, uh, pretty much any material you can think of, they have ready to go for Octane, Arnold, all that fun stuff. So if I go to my extension menu, I'm going to actually click on Forester, and I'm going to bring up this little plant multi-flora you can see I've added now a plant to our scene and this is how we're going to add grass to our uh, landscape before we do that though let's add a, a rock texture it's a ground texture 
into our landscape here. Let's actually change the length of it. Now, the reason I like to throw a rock texture, uh, we're gonna see the rocks pop out just a little bit uh, when we set up our grass. I don't like to have grass covering the whole thing. Eventually, we're gonna see some rocks poke through. Let's actually go to our displacement of the rocks, turn it up a little bit. Now we're looking at our rock texture. Got a nice little texture here on our, on our ground. I see a question in the chat. Is this Octane? Yes, this is Octane. We are using Octane tonight. And let me save this actually really quick. Cool, so now that we got our plane set up, Remember, just to review, we uh, added the splicer to our plane, made the hills. Now we're going to use what's called Octane Scatter. And what this is, is let's just take our one object and scatter it all across this plane. So I'm going to drag my Multiflora into Octane Scatter. When I select Octane Scatter, I'm going to see this area that says Surface. Let's change it to Surface. And the plane we created, which I'm going to rename ground, we're going to drag into that surface. And right away, you see all these, the grass we had that we created start popping up on the ground. I'm actually going to select multi-flora. And this extension, uh, Forester, actually comes with an awesome library of grass. And I'm going to select wild patch grass. So now you can see our grass is starting to come in. I'm gonna turn Octane Scatter up a lot. I'm gonna add a lot of grass to this. So I'm telling the scatter to add 31,000 instances of this wild grass patch. So now you can, when we zoom in, I'll let the renderer load for everybody that's viewing online. You can start seeing our grass is coming into play. One second, y'all. Just making sure I put this on Instagram so people we're live here. Cool, I got people texting me questions that are watching from their phones. Um, cool, so what I like to do with my grass, I like to add multiple grass versions to, uh, to the scatter. So I'm actually gonna copy and paste the wild grass patch. I'm gonna select a different grass for my forester library. This time I'm gonna select Instead of wild grass, I'm going to select long grass. And now when I take the long grass and I drag it into the scatter, you can kind of see we have different types of grass starting to come up. In real life, grass isn't just one type of grass. There's a lot of different uh, you know, instances, lengths. Whoa, that's a little too big. fast I have plans tonight so I got to jump out of here soon so if you have any questions just shoot them in the chat cool so one thing I like to do with my octane scatter it looks too uniform right now like all the grass is repeating in the same pattern they're all the same size it doesn't look how we want it so to change that we're gonna add what's called an effector to octane scatter so if you go to MoGraph, up top, Effector, you're going to see Random. Once I select Random, you see it pop up here. And this lets us set a couple different parameters, Position, Scale, and Rotation. So in Octane Scatter, I'm going to select it, select Effectors, and I'm going to drag this Random into it. Now you can see our grass is kind of doing a bunch of stuff down here. This is why I add the rocks below. Now you can just kind of start seeing the rocks poking through the grass. So how do we control all this with the effector? We click the effector, the random. I'm actually going to change all the positions to zero really quick. And maybe change this Y to 15, X to 5. Let's see what happens if we do 50 for Z. change the scale so 
now they're not all the same size. So now when we uh, zoom into the grass, you can start seeing our grass is starting to look a little more realistic. We have different types of grass, different shadings, different lengths, different positions from before. They're all very uniform. So once we've done that, we can also change our rotation in our effector. Maybe we tilt the grass a little bit, rotate them. Now our grass is looking pretty realistic. Sweet. Okay, so now that we have our grass set up, Remember that vertex map we had made before? If we click Octane Scatter, go to Distribution, we'll see a vertex map. If we drop our vertex map in there, now our rocks are coming out. And let me actually change this to cubic. some random grass we got some random flowers in there we got some rocks it's starting to come together bingo so once we have our grass our rocks created I'm actually going to create a plane set it the same size kind of see it's already looking like water that's kind of the goal with creating the second plane to make it look like agua set we got our grass set let's actually light this thing up using what's called HDRI grayscale gorilla I'm actually gonna add a sky to this scene scene starting to come together it's nicely lit we got our grass we got our little pond right there it's starting to come to life
All right, for everybody that's just jumping in, if you're watching the replay, if you're watching live, let's kind of review of what we've done so far. So we started off with a plane that we deformed. Once we deformed, we added this rock texture and we started adding grass to our texture. We added random effectors to give some character to our grass. We added a plane of water. We added our octane sky and our sunlight to give it this, uh, this lighting look. So the next thing we're gonna do that I like to do uh, when creating nature is we gotta add some trees to this thing. So again, using the extension Forester, Forester trees, Go to the tree library and this time I'm going to select a nice let's select let's see what tree we want to select here I'm going to select an orange tree that could be pretty cool now just a fair warning if you're using Forester make sure you have a fast computer uh, Right now, my setup is running to 3090 GPUs. Uh, this thing could crush your computer and definitely freeze while you're working, uh, especially if you turn what's called hyperwind on. So here we are, adding some trees to our scene. What I like to do is copy and paste the trees, move them around, rotate them a little differently, uh, scale them down a little bit so they're different sizes so they're not all the same and I do have to go soon because the Miami Heat are playing y'all but again I'm going to do these live streams uh, definitely more in the future it's pretty fun to take these uh, creation sessions live online I usually just do them in private, but it just makes sense. If I'm going to do them, I might as well do them with y'all, you know? Sweet. So again, we're just going to copy more trees, place them around our pond, give our uh, scene some some life here. Sweet. So right now we got our trees, we got our grass, we got our flowers, we got the water, we got the sunlight. Our, uh, our nature scene is looking pretty good. I want to change it up though tonight and add some sci-fi elements. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go to Mixamo.com. Mixamo is provided by Adobe. It has a whole character library. Uh, let you pick from a bunch of different characters. I'm actually going to pick this Ybot character that I like a lot. Uh, I know people see it kind of basic, but I think you have a lot of fun with these Ybots. I'm going to type in the word pose and look for some different character poses here. So once we have a character pose we like, I'm going to go ahead and download it so we can add it to our scene. Let's bring it back to Cinema 40. Sweet. So we downloaded our character. I'm actually going to group them together and call 
call him character pose. A little small. We want to make this character huge. So let's scale the character up. Might be too big. 777. center click on your screen it's going to go to four views which is nice if you want to work in multi-view I'm going to give uh, some life to this light a little cheat I like to do when I'm lazy this isn't recommended but I like to light just put an area above right above the scene to give it some extra lighting while I build. I'm actually going to color the light as well. Cool. So we have our character in here. Uh, for those that are watching, we've built our landscape using Forester. We made the grass, we made the trees. Uh, now we got this character in here that I want to give some sci-fi elements to this, to this thing and one trick I like to do is I like to add some grass to this Ybot's body uh, I think it's a pretty cool outcome when you do it so let me actually group all these trees it's important to label all your stuff we're gonna add an octane scatter set the surface of the character to be the selection and in Forester we're actually going to select another grass wild grass and drag it on our character now you can see it's crazy right now I'm going to bring the size down a little bit and you can see when I bring the size down it starts fitting to the character to see right now but it's coming together so yeah so you can start seeing we're building like this grass mannequin which I like to do a lot if you follow my work online uh, I think it's a pretty cool technique bring this character up a little bit and maybe we're going to shrink the character as well scaled the character down so we kind of got this like grass mannequin lighting up from inside in the center of our lake uh, kind of floating right above not sure if I like it it's a little a little much but it's coming out pretty cool if we want to add some sci-fi elements to to our plane to our art so let's actually add some lights to our scene, an octane light, right click on it and add a target. And we're gonna set that target to our uh, character that we just put into the scene. Now using the top view, I'm gonna move this light around, position it above our character. bring some light to our character and we're also going to set the vi visibility to not show on specular so it doesn't take away from our water cool so now we got this kind of scene that's starting to uh, have a sci-fi vibe to it it reminds me of that movie with Natalie Portman I, for I forgot the name of that movie what is the name of that movie
there's a scene here let's see if I can bring it up there's a scene here uh, where there's like these people made out of plants and I think it'd be really cool if we kind of recreate that in Cinema 4D with this little character we got going on here now what I want to do is add a Octane camera, set it to 80 millimeters, so you can kind of start seeing now. Now we could uh, angle our camera to give it the look we want. Let's see, somebody's hit me up on Instagram, y'all. One second. cool so what I want to do in our octane camera is I'm actually gonna set the f-stop kind of start seeing now it's really focused on our character and the trees in the background have kind of blurred out not sure why it's not blurring out more it's strange So just like that, now we have our character floating. That's our scene, y'all, for the night. I know it was a quick one tonight. Uh, but yeah, I hope you all had fun and learned something. Miami Heat are playing, so I do have to bounce out of here soon. Sweet. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for uh, watching. I do have to go. Have a great evening and a great Saturday night, and we will see you soon.